Okay, so for those of you that are new to the room, I am uh, Vishal Acharya. I am a principal research engineer in the combustion lab at Georgia Tech. And I'm the session chair for the second session on reacting flows and combustion. Um, sorry, we are running a little bit behind because we had technical issues in the previous session, so it ran a bit over. But we'll get started. Our first presenter for this session is Tommaso Lucini from Politecno Co di Milano, and he's going to talk about some work that he's done with IC. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman, for, uh, for your kind introduction. Uh, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, internal combustion engines. Now, uh, first of all, I would like uh, to acknowledge uh, the co authors of this presentation, Giovanni Gianetti, Federico Ramonino, Andrea Schirro, Lorenzo Sforza, and Gianluca Del Rico for the material and support provided for, uh, for this presentation. Internal combustion engines nowadays are leaving uh, their own transition and uh, developments is mainly focused uh, on the hard to abate sector or eventually new application. And uh, a lot of activity is still uh, needed uh, to increase the efficiency of engines and also to reduce uh, pollutant emission. This is possible uh, by, for example, using uh, low carbon fuels or uh, by uh, developing advanced combustion system or exploring uh, new high efficiency engine concepts. What uh, we are presenting today is the development of computational uh, methodologies inside the open form framework for uh, engine cases that are currently of uh, interest for research and for development. In particular, the recuperated split cycle engine, hydrogen spark ignition engine, and rotary engine. Results have been also uh, validated with experimental data, the presentation we show the uh, developments uh, performed within uh, our uh, framework for combustion modeling and for mesh management. The computational methodologies uh, have been uh, implemented uh, into the device code, which is a set of libraries and solvers developed uh, by our research group for uh, the simulation of internal combustion engines, after treatment systems, thermal management, good machines, and flows, in porous media. Here we can see the structure of Levi's code. It's a set of libraries and solvers which can be plugged to an open form version. Levi's has its own original implementation. We can see here the construction for the internal combustion engine part, solvers, utilities, and SRC, but also not only original implementation, but also intends to extend the capability of uh, open form by adding maybe additional uh, components and so on. They, uh, differently from uh, conventional uh, engines, recuperated split cycle engine have dedicated uh, pistons for uh, compression and uh, for expansion. In particular, the air is transferred from the cold piston when the two pistons approach the top dead center. Air is transferred from the cold side and it is uh, injected into the hot side where the combustion takes place. Uh, these engines offer theoretically efficiency, which is even higher than 55%, thanks to the reduced compression work, increased expansion work, and the possibility to do intracom. However, the modeling of uh, the red split cycle engines is uh, quite a challenging task for the uh, computational fluid dynamics. First of all, the air is uh, called injected under a pressure ratio that for most of the industrial phase is higher than the critical value. Piston and head of the engine are coated, so it's important to pay attention to the heat transfer model. And also injection and combustion uh, happens uh, under non-conventional charge motion condition. The first uh, activity was focused on uh, the air injection phase. And in particular, a mesh sensitivity analysis was done, performing steady state simulation on a two dimensional axis symmetry grid. Two different valve lifts were considered with two corresponding expansion ratio. One is above the critical value, and the other is below the critical value. We have investigated different grid structure, in particular changing the refinement level in the valve region 
resolving the boundary layer and also trying to resolve the edge. What we have found is that when we have injection above the critical pressure ratio, it is very important to have a very high level of refinement in the valve region. You can see that from level 3 to level 5, we got a reduction of the blue coefficient and more or less then it stays constant. And this aspect uh, is quite important because uh, with the right prediction of the flow coefficient, we can correctly predict the right amount of the cylinder trapped mass. When we go to uh, lower expansion ratio, instead, the mesh is not very sensitive. The results are not very sensitive to the mesh. On the basis of this simulation, then, we have uh, performed, uh, generated a mesh according. In particular, inside, this is the methodology for the simulation of gas exchange and combustion. Device, in combination with snapping hex mesh, takes the combustion chambers of phase and then automatically generates uh, the computational meshes that are required for the full cycle simulation. The simulation is then performed by another utility that sequentially runs a specified solver and maps the fields from one mesh to the other. For the combustion model, uh, I would uh, say remark that uh, we are currently using tabulated kinetics. So reaction rates and chemical composition are stored in a lookup table. Why tabulated kinetics? It's much faster compared to direct integration. And uh, also, another aspect, uh, it uh, doesn't have uh, all the problems that be related to the integrator of the OD solver, which sometimes can crash. Yesterday, this aspect was uh, clearly discussed in some presentation. And also, it's possible to tabulate uh, different flame structures. So, the laminar flamelets, uh, uh, transported PDF, uh, and so on. So, it's a very flexible approach to the kinetics, which is very suitable for the flow simulation in complex geometries with a relatively small amount of computational time. This is the engine that has been considered. We can see in particular that the induction phase lasts only for 17 degrees and that fuel is injected when the intake valve is still open. We can see here the computational mesh. It was consistently refined as it was done uh, and, uh, considering the results of the steady state flow simulation. And uh, here we can see the movie reporting the computed pressure field on the top and the flow streamlines on the bottom. We can see in particular that uh, towards the top of the center, the charge motion are very chaotic due to the flow coming from the different valves and very different from what we can expect in a diesel engine at the top that center. In terms of uh, comparison between computed and experimental data, the cylinder pressure trace during the induction phase is rather well predicted, considering that we have a very high expansion ratio. Uh, what certainties, of course, on the flow coefficient result are in a rather good agreement with experimental data. But for the temperature, in order to match the temperature which has been estimated by the 1D code, we had to set uh, adiabatic boundary condition for piston and head because this engine has coated uh, piston and head. For what concerns the combustion, here we can see the injection of the different sprays and then the way they evolve. The flow, uh, the charge motion uh, is uh, not uh, organized, which means that every spray evolves uh, under different uh, conditions of uh, velocity and temperature. The first jet that ignites is the one which is exposed to the highest temperature range you can see here, and then we have a sort of play propagation. In terms of heat release rate, due to the fact that at the start of injection, the temperatures are not very high, we have a strong premixed peak followed by a diffusive tail, and the results are in agreement with what is expected for such kind of energy. Coming to the other topic, which is uh, hydrogen internal combustion engine, hydrogen is considered, hydrogen engines are nowadays considered as a viable solution for the decarbonization of heavy duty transport and also for other applications. What we can see 
is a unprecedented wave of research and development for hydrogen combustion engine together with the uh, consolidation of a production chain for both the components and the engines inside. In terms of uh, comparison between internal combustion engines and fuel cell, they are complementary. There are applications in which fuel cells are better and other where internal combustion engines are better. So what technologies are needed to completely exploit uh, the potential of hydrogen as energy care. We have performed a simulation on a single cylinder engine, which uh, is uh, tested uh, at the CFT in Valencia. And in particular, we have evaluated at constant speed the effect of a relative air fuel ratio at constant load and the effect of the load at the constant relative air fuel ratio. Also, we have simulated with our YD uh, in house code. Uh, the full engine to provide the suitable boundary condition at the intake and exhaust of the CFD domain. Here we can see the computational mesh. We have generated just half of the combustion chamber grid because it's symmetrical and some details of the mesh in the cylinder symmetry plane, but also near the valve with a one boundary layer which was placed on the top of the valve surface. This is again the mesh motion for the different grids which has been used. In terms of number of cells, it ranges from 80,000 cells at TDC up to 650 at bottom per cell. We can see here a movie that illustrates the development of the velocity field during exhaust and intake and compression. You can see that during intake, there is a formation of a tumble vortex, which is then destroyed and converted into two points towards the end of the compression structure. In terms of uh, comparison between computed and experimental date of pressure during the gas exchange, clearly 1D and 3D results are very similar because uh, 3D simulation were done with the boundary condition from the 1D code, but those the agreement is rather good also for the uh, comparison between computed and experimental and computed CFD and experimental data. Then, uh, once we realize that the the gas exchange was correctly predicted, so we have the correct amount of trapped mass in this leader. We can move to the combustion model. For the combustion, we have used the Weller 1 equation model, which was evolved in order to include a suitable description of the laminar to turbulent phase transition to predict, to calculate the flame wrinkle factor with the Peters correlation. Moreover, the laminar phase speed of hydrogen is taken from a lookup table that uh, has been uh, generated by performing the detailed kinetics uh, calculation of laminar phase speed. Hydrogen is very unstable as a fuel because it has a very high diffusivity, so we have uh, used uh, a correlation proposed by pitch to correct uh, the laminar phase speed uh, at uh, lean conditions. This is the computational mesh used for combustion, only one mesh with dynamic mesh layering that is changing the mesh topology when the piston is moving up and down. The mesh is generated automatically with a Python script, so you just give a bounding box and the mesh surface and the shape of the layer, and then it generates automatically the mesh. And here we can see the frame propagation. So it's, uh, I think everything seems okay. It starts from the spark. It properly propagates in the work of Aston Chamber. Here it's uh, the combustion progress variable, while here you can see the temperature field. In terms of uh, experimental validation, what we can see? We can see that the simulation correctly predicts the increase of the combustion duration at constant load when we increase the relative air fuel ratio. So as uh, in uh, uh, experiments, also simulation, we needed to increase the spark advance to match the same load. So the model is sensitive in a proper way to the changes in the relative air fuel ratio. And also, when we keep the same relative fuel ratio, but we increase the load, we can clearly see an increase of the cylinder pressure and the heat release. So results are satisfactory, but still we need to extend the laminar flame speed lookup table and further assess with more operating point and correction on the laminar flame speed. Finally, the last part is about a possible new application of uh, uh, internal combustion engine, in particular, rotary engines seems they are making a comeback because of their high specific power and uh, compactness. 
uh, in, in particular for this, they can be suitable to be range extenders or uh, in electrified vehicles, or they could be also uh, propulsion systems for unmanned aerial vehicles. However, this kind of technology needs uh, to be uh, improved and computational fluid dynamics is there. So we need to use computational fluid dynamics for rotary engine. And in this, say, we need this context. What we have done was to develop a methodology for the simulation of rotary engines. In particular, we have developed a utility that uh, generates uh, key grids at the user-specified uh, crank angle intervals to complete one rotor revolution. The block mesh includes uh, P-lines so that uh, the mesh can properly fit to the rotor and stator profile at a different crank angle and uh, project to face so that it is possible also to account for the recess on the rotor surface. The mesh motion, since all these mesh are topologically consistent, is done with the dynamic interpolated FP mesh. The approach supports a single chamber or multiple chamber, and it is generic, so it could be extended also for other rotary machines. The uh, ports uh, grids is uh, generated with an APX mesh, before educated with a block mesh that fits to the stator geometry, and then the dynamic connection between the ports and the chamber is done by means of the arbitrary couple mesh interface. We can see here a movie reporting the grid motion for a rotary engine. This is the engine that has been simulated. Again, a 1D model was also generated for supporting the CFD simulations. And here we can see the gas exchange process, in particular on the left, we can see the flow streamlines, while on the right, the concentration of oxygen, which gives us an idea about say, then, how much, how good is the uh, induction process. So what we can see in terms of flow streamlines, during the intake, we can see, okay, so there is a jet of air, so there is a jet that is generating a large vortex here, but there are some sort of secondary vortexes also on the side of the jet due to the interaction between the jet and the air inside, which is quite simple. In terms of uh, uh, validation, here the uh, experimental data are only available for the power cycle because of the position of the sensor, so we compared 1D and 3D data for the gas exchange. Results are in rather good agreement, except in two conditions, when the two ports are contemporarily open, and in this case, the 1D model needs a dedicated approach, so it makes sense that 1D and 3D do not agree. While on the top dead center, things are a bit more complicated because it seems that CFD is, under, is underestimating the heat transfer. When moving then to combustion, so we basically the flow field only to the chamber mesh to simulate combustion, we can predict rather well the heat release rate profile, but to do this and to get the right cylinder pressure, unfortunately, we need to tune a bit the heat transfer model, in this case, we use the Angelberger wall function, because otherwise we would have had a too high uh, overestimated pressure, because too high means 32 24 pounds, but uh, this is an aspect that will be further studied, also looking at the effect of the turbulence model. Because when the when the rotor when the chamber is expanding, maybe there is even a sort of divergent uh, effect that maybe K epsilon is not able to see. So, to conclude my talk, uh, open source CFD technology is uh, the ideal framework to tackle the new important challenges in engine development. And this is thanks to the community effort, the open form uh, development, and uh, also to the in-house development that, that we do in our group related to engine simulation. What will come next is the uh, is simulation of methanol and ammonia in marine engines and opposed to piston engines. And for that, uh, what we are developing right now are models to handle dual fuel combustion, either diesel pilot igniting a premixed charge or double diffusive and also a Lagrangian wall film model, which uh, could uh, make uh, the film modeling of moving mesh much easier than uh, the current approaches. Thank you very much for your thank you.
Uh, we have time for one question for Tomaso. What we do, we have a utility that takes the STL, it moves the STL surfaces, then applies snappy hex measure on them. Yes. With power rate. There's nothing smash, yes, while all the utility and the workflow for the. We use open phone with our utilities for uh, moving the server. At the moment, we are using a foundation uh, game. Okay. Let's go. Okay, let's thank the master again. Okay. Okay, our next presenter is Thibaut Juhan from Ecole Central in Lyon, France, and he's going to talk about uh, catalytic using uh, numerical simulations for flow in a cell for catalytic reaction. So thank you for this introduction. So good morning, everyone. My name is Thibaut. I'm a PhD student from the Central School and the Laboratory of Fluid Mechanics and Acoustics in Lyon. I started my PhD since eight months, which is on the numerical simulation of flow in cell for catalytic reaction in open foam. And uh, it's overseen by Ivan Avinkovich and Serge Simons. And it's also in part of an ANR project in collaboration with those laboratories and the different companies. So first of all, I'm going to introduce the subject by redoing some studies to clear up my problematic. Next, I'm going to present my first results, which describe the flow dynamics and the concentration of the scalar concentration on the catalytic sample. And to finish, I will present the conclusions and perspectives. So the catalytic reaction is widely used in some industrial applications, for example, to reduce the carbon dioxide into some valuated chemical fuels, such as biofuel or synthetic fuels, which are used uh, in industrial uh, in the manufacturing or in transport industries, for example. And in this process, uh, the reactants are transported by a flow, whereas they are going to settle on the catalytic samples on the catalytic sites. Next, the chemical reaction takes place, which produces a reaction product, and they are dissolved from this uh, active surface. So the transport of reactants will have an impact on the reactor efficiency. And this transport uh, have already been studied by uh, the different numerical work. For example, the numerical work of Maestri and uh, Rossi where they uh, cooped the CFD simulations of open form with a kinetic Monte Carlo model to describe the chemistry on the sample. So they studied um, a tubular reactor with a catalytic bed ring inside it. And uh, another configuration uh, has been studied by uh, Matera and Rotor, where the catalytic sample is built in the reactor wall. So they studied two different configurations, a poison flow reactor and a stagnation flow reactor where they computed the TOF, which is the number of reactions per TEM and area units along the catalytic sample. And as we can see on these pictures, um, this TOF is more homogeneous for a stagnation flow reactor, which means that more cat catalytic sites are used and the reactor efficiency is better for this case. However, there is no uh, details of a uh, free dynamics and particularly on the effect of the injection. For example, if there is an effect on the Uniformization or multi jet configuration, for example. And I'm going to study uh, this effect. And I start by studying the, uh, this effect in the cylindrical cell with, uh, on the top wall, uh, two parallel circular injectors. Uh, and both injectors have a radius R, and the spacing between both centers is given by S. So I define the dimensionless number lambda, which is the ratio of the spacing, uh, the spacing between both centers and uh, the radius and jet radius. Uh, next, uh, to describe the, the flow, we are numerically reserved the Navier-Stokes equations, 
And in the first time, we don't take into account the thermal effect and the reaction on the sample. So we just have an incompressible flow, an incompressible flow, sorry. And when the flow reaches a steady state, uh, we are going to add a scalar uh, in the simulation. So we are going to reserve these scalar transport equations. So as we can see, both equations have uh, involved uh, two different dimensionless numbers. So the Reynolds number, which describes the flow dynamics. And in this range of uh, this parameter, we are going to, uh, the flow is, going, is uh, considered as a laminar flow. And we have got the Schmidt number, which is fixed to one for all the simulations. So now uh, we have presented the geometry and these different equations. We are going to describe the flow dynamics. And we will start by representing uh, a slice view of, this, of the cell where the injection comes from the top. And the color bar is given by the, lo the velocity in the logarithmic, logarithmic scale. Sorry. And as we can see, we can, def we can uh, define some characteristic regions or characteristic zone. So firstly, we've got a recirculation zone, which comes from the entrainment of the surrounding fluid by the flow at the exit of the injector. So we've got two vertices be be, uh, between both injectors and two others at the other extremity. Next, both flows start to interact. So we've got this interaction zone. And after impact, the flow is radially deviated. So we've got a flow which is parallel to uh, the bottom one, to the center. Uh, so we need to describe uh, this, interaction, this interaction zone because it's complex. And the concentration on the sample will be, uh, uh, will be uh, depend. Sorry, will be depend on the on this interaction. So to to describe this interaction uh, between both jets, we based our analysis on the interaction between both two parallel two, uh, two, two parallel turbulent free jets. So we can define this interaction from the ax axial velocity along the symmetry line that are represented by a dotted, uh, like dotted line. And as we can see, we can define three different regions. So firstly, the converging zone, which is the recirculation zone that I showed before. The next, we define the merging zone. Uh, and these zones start from the merging point or mixing point where the velocity, axial velocity is zero along the symmetry line. Next, we've got this combined zone where two jets uh, recombine into a single one. And, and this, uh, this zone starts from this combined point where the velocity, where axial velocity is a maximum on this point. So in this case, it's for a free jet. However, in our case, we've got a wall. So we need to, to see what is the influence of this wall on uh, these different regions. And to describe it, I represent uh, the axial velocity along the symmetry line in function of the z-axis. So where the z zero corresponds to the top wall and the one corresponds to the bottom wall. And as we can see, we can define this converging uh, zone from the top and the mixing, and the mixing point. Next, we define the mixing zone from the maximum of the axial velocity along the symmetry line. However, we can define this uh, combined zone, and we've got uh, a zone where the velocity, axial velocity is negative. Uh, so we've got this zone with this uh, fountain flow, which goes back uh, to the top one. So to describe this different region and what is the influence on the lambda and the Reynolds number, we, I represent the, merging, the position of the merging point and the fountain flow height in function of the Reynolds number and the color bar is given by lambda. And as we can see, both uh, values increase with the Reynolds number. For example, for the highest lambda, which is uh, six, uh, we've got a maximum value of one when the Reynolds number is equal to uh, 40, which means that the mix occurs after impact the wall. So it occurs due to the interaction between two opposite radial jets and the fountain flow goes back to the top wall. However, for the lowest lambda, so lambda equal to, we haven't got any fountain flow because this uh, value is zero for all Reynolds number. And the uh, mixing point is also zero, which means that the mix occurs directly after the exit of the injectors. So to group all these simulations, uh, I create uh, a phase diagram 
uh, in function of the lambda and the Reynolds number. And the color bar is given by the fountain flow height. And <clears throat> the symbol represents the different topology of the flow. So for the, for the cycle, uh, two jets recombine into a single one before impact of the wall. Next, for the square, uh, two, uh, two jets mix before impact, but we haven't got a recombination between both jets. Uh, for the triangle pointing downward, we've got uh, an interaction before impact of the wall. However, we've got also a fountain flow, so it is blocked due to the interaction. And the last case, where the triangle pointing upward, where we haven't got any interaction before impact the wall, and the fountain flow goes back to the top wall. So now we have described the flow dynamics in the, the in the cell. We are going to describe the concentration on the sample, uh, on the scalar cloud concentration. So I started by representing two slides view of the bottom wall for Reynolds number equal 14 and the smallest lambda, and the highest Reynolds number for and the smallest lambda too. And the color bar is given by the concentration over C0. C0 is the concentration at the, inlet, at the inlet, so in the injectors. So as we can see for the small Reynolds number, we have uh, the concentration pattern still axis symmetric. Uh, however, when we increase the Reynolds number, we can see that we've got uh, the axis symmetry is broken. And we've got a preferential leakage in the direction which is orthogonal to the uh, injectors. So now to describe the, uh, the concentration on the sample, we represent the mean concentration in function of the Reynolds number. So for the small Reynolds number, we haven't got any effect of lambda. So when the flow is axis symmetric, we haven't got, we haven't got an effect of, this, uh, of the spacing. Next, uh, when the Reynolds number increase, we can see that we, uh, the lambda has an effect on the concentration on the sample. And to link this uh, observation with the flow dynamics the topology that I showed before, we are, uh, I present three, uh, three different slides view for the highest Reynolds number and three different topology. So for the smallest lambda, we've got uh, uh, a recombined uh, the two jets recombine uh, before impact. Next, for intermediate uh, lambda, we have we've got a fountain flow which is blocked due to the interaction before impact the top wall, uh, the bottom wall. Sorry. And next, for the highest Reynolds number, uh, I guess lambda. Sorry, we've got uh, any interaction before impact, and the fountain flow goes back to the top wall. And to link it with the with the concentration. On the mean concentration on the sample, I represent this uh, concentration in function of lambda. And as we can see, we've got a minimum value when uh, the lambda equals 3.4, so when the fountain flow is blocked. So now we would like to uh, compute the residence time, uh, the time, the residence time in the in the cell. So. We add some passive tracers in the in our simulations, and uh, we compute the resi residence time distribution, which is a ratio of the number of particles leaving the relieving the reactor in uh, over the <coughs> integral of this value over time, and it represents the number of particles that we injected and uh, and the time uh, t equals zero. So to compute the mean residence time, we just compute the integral of the t times the distribution. And we, I represent this, uh, this, mean, uh, this mean time in function of lambda, where tau is given by the filling time. So it's just the ratio of the volume, the cell volume over the volumetric flow rate. And as we can see, for the low, rest, for the low Reynolds number, uh, this mean residence time is equal to this filling, uh, this filling time. And we've got an effect where the axis symmetry is broken, particularly for the lambda equal five, where we got the maximum value of this mean residence time. And it will be important to compute it because uh, we need to estimate the contact time with the catalytic site to uh, predict to predict the better case for uh, the reaction rates. So to conclude, um, so I present the flow dynamics. Uh, where the flow comes from two uh, two circular injectors on the top wall, and we can we have seen that 
uh, when the flow stay axis is axis symmetric, the concentration that stay axis symmetric is two. However, when, when the axis symmetry is broken, we've got an effect of lambda of the, of the spacing between both injectors. And when the fontaine flow is blocked, we've got an important liquid and the mean concentration on the sample is, um, is minimal. And for the perspective, uh, we want to describe the flow dynamics for four injectors or multi-jet configuration. Next. Uh, next, we want to compute the residence time distributions or uh, close to the sample to predict the content time of the particle on the sample. And to finish, we are going to cook the CFD server with a, temp with a temperature equation and a kinetic Monte Carlo model to describe the, chemi the chemistry on the sample. So I finished my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Any questions for people? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh. Yeah. Uh, for this, uh, this like no. Uh, yeah. Before, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I already start uh, with one jet, and and for the one jet, uh, the concentration stay axis symmetric for all the Reynolds number that I uh, I use. Yeah. But in fact, uh, in my job, I would like to use a multi-jet configuration. And just to beginning, we want to know how different jets are going to interact. So I just start by two. I already uh, work uh, for a four jet, configu uh, four jet configuration, but I haven't got time to present it. So uh, mm, OK. Yeah, OK, thank you. Yeah, thank you for your discussion. Uh, in fact, um, I work in collaboration with uh, with, with the YRC Lyon, which do some experiment with a multi jet configuration. So, in my case, I would like to optimize the the flow dynamics and the and the reaction rates. So that's why we are going to to use the this multi jet configuration. Any other questions for people? Okay, let's thank him. Thank you.